on the SQL Answer GitHub page. And if we scroll down, you can see that we have a getting started section. So what do you need um, to run SQL Answer? So SQL Answer is written in Java, meaning that you need to have a JDK installed. So here, for example, you can see um, that I already have a JDK installed to so version 11, which is a bit old, but still meets the minimum requirement of uh, SQL Answer. And then you can also see that you need to have Maven installed, which I also already do. So next, um, let me execute these steps one by one. First, we need to um, execute. First, we need to clone SQL Answer from GitHub. So you see that this already succeeded. Next, um, we can go to the SQL Answer directory here. And you can see, for example, now if we try to retrieve the history, um, you can see that um, this also works, right? We see the individual uh, commits. Wait, um, next, we need to execute Maven package, basically building the project using Maven. And you can also see that we uh, use this optional skip tests. And the reason for this is that we don't want to wait for the tests and being executed. Now, the first time if you execute this will take a while because Maven will download all the dependencies, all the chars on which a SQL answer relies. For example, these are the database uh, drivers of the database systems that SQL answer supports. Next, we need to go to the um, build char directory, so this target directory. And you can see here already that we have built a version of SQL answer that we can now execute. How can we execute it? Well, um, let's for now just copy the command listed here. We can already see that some output is being produced. And next, you can see that um, SQL answer is generating some output. And this essentially means that SQL answer is working as expected. So very briefly, what does the output here mean? Here, you can see the number of queries that has been uh, executed so far. You can see the number of queries executed every second, which is quite a lot. And um, here you can see how many databases are created per second. Right? So SQL answer will always create a new database state, execute a number of queries, and validate the results before creating the next database state. Here you can also see a percentage for the successful statements. And here, the reason is that SQL answer always aims to generate statements that are syntactically correct and should do so, um, except there is an implementation mistake. But it cannot guarantee that um, some of them might result in a semantic error. For example, if you have an insert statement that inserts a duplicate value into a column that has a unique constraint, SQL answer doesn't check for uh, this kind of cases. And rather than trying to prevent unique values from being inserted, which can be quite tricky, for example, if you think of strings and different ways on how they are compared, um, it just ignores such errors. So we as developers can declare them as expected. And this overall means here that we won't see 100% success rate. And here you can see the number of threads that have been shut down. And this basically corresponds to how many bugs we have found in the database system so far. So here, since we are testing on the latest version of SQLite, we cannot see any. Well, next um, one question is how can we know um, or like how will actually SQL answer terminate? And here the answer is it won't. Um, SQL answer is a fuzzing approach and we don't really know when we have found all the bugs in the system. So this means that SQL answer will basically run forever until we stop its execution or unless we stop its execution. And we can do so using control C. And so here we'll now use a control C and now, uh, as you can see, we have exited um, uh, SQL answer. Um, here you can also see that some options are described. Um, how can you see these options? Well, you can do so by just um, deleting all the arguments to SQL answer, and then all of the supported options are um, displayed. Now, if you scroll up here, which takes a while because SQL answer supports a lot of different database systems, um, you can see the option format. But so we first um, have the general options that are supported. These options that are general to all the database systems that um, SQL answer supports. Right? For example, here you can see that um, the host, that's something that you can configure. And this is um, an argument that all the database systems implement. Then you can see that we have a command. And this is essentially 
the database system that we want to test, right in our example before, um, it was a uh, SQLite. And you can also see here this, this option was a general option, namely the number of threads that we specified. And then we also have some database system specific options. Right? So here, if we, for example, scroll down to the first um, database system, which here is Citos. So Citos um, supports some options that are specific to its system. For example, here, whether some repartitioning joints are allowed or not. And this is something that not all systems are supported, which is why this is a database system specific options. Um, finally, you might be wondering why we could directly run SQL answer on SQLite without having to do any kind of setup or installation of the system. The reason for this is that it's an embedded database system, um, meaning that it runs in the same process as the application. And in this case, the, um, the driver, like the chart that we included for a SQLite already contains the binary code of SQLite. And this actually also for DuckDB and H2. So if you want to experiment quickly with SQL answer, then using an embedded database system um, allows you to not like enables you to not um, having like not have to uh, install a database system. Um, very briefly, also, how can you actually see what's going on in the background? So there, um, SQL Answer uh, has a, has a logs uh, directory that it maintains. And here we can see in the subdirectory of SQLite that we have four log files, one for each thread that was started. And um, we can now use some graphical editor to open one. Yeah, and here you can see that we have some kind of meter information, for example, the random seed value, the database version that we tested. And then you can see that we have um, some test cases, um, some SQL statements that we are executing on the database system. And um, if now I would run SQL answer again, these files would constantly change. Um, and also, if Sequencer finds a bug, it will create an additional file um, without this curl suffix here. Right, so this is the um, quickest way to get started with Sequencer. There are, of course, many more things to learn, and uh, feel free to watch some of the other videos to do so. So with that, thanks for listening.